Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, he's been on before. You know who he is. This weekend, he dropped a 21-8 in the 50-meter freestyle at the Pro Swim in Richmond to take the victory and also to set a new personal best. Today, we've got NC State commit David Curtis. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, so first off, take me through that 50 meter freestyle. You had a great weekend overall. Um, what were you thinking coming, heading into this meet, uh, the pro swim in Richmond? Um, being out 11 months of training, uh, I definitely didn't have too many expectations because I've been on and off training, uh, back and forth month on month off due to COVID restrictions in New Jersey. So expectations were very, very low. Um, just kind of go, uh, get into the rhythm again, try to get, get competing, get the feel of what it's like to be in a pool with other people, uh, other than your teammates. Um, so going into that meet, it was just very calm and easy, fun, actually. Me and my coach were having a lot of fun on the days that we were there getting tested, but um, not nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah. And then, I mean, take me through the meet, you kind of how it went for you just as you were moving through things and then emotionally, what, what were your reactions to the times you were posting? The, the 21 prelims was definitely a shocker, but then again, um, I've been working a lot out of the pool with my uh, trainer, Dave T's in terms of power and strength work. So seeing that was a surprise. Yes. But also kind of a relief to say, to see that the work uh, was turning into results. Um, emotionally, it was a little bit of a roller coaster because I was not expecting to PR in either of my events. The 100 free was a little bit disappointing. I wanted to be on, on, in the 50s as my goal is to make trials in that um, in the future. But um, I just I kind of realized that the entire weekend, number one, was a blessing to be swimming. And then um, me being only on two and a half weeks of training previous to that, me being off a month, the, the, all the, everything that I did there, meeting my teammates, um, so many of the times I did, it was just, I mean, it all, it all worked out really nicely. Okay. Two, two, you were in the pool two and a half weeks prior, and then you were out of the pool for a month. Um, I mean, take, take me through that. What was, what was it like just getting back in the water after a month and being out of the water for a month? What were you doing during that time? Um, it was actually swapped. I had a month off first and then two and a half weeks training prior to the okay. meet. All right. So it, it was definitely hard because I'm so used to having that schedule of wake up, eat, school, and then swim, eat again, then sleep. So like that schedule being messed up was definitely a little bit of a mental uh, challenge for me because I'm, I'm a very schedule based person, but training wise, uh, it definitely it hit me hard, especially in the hundred freestyle because I, I just didn't have that stamina to hit that back 25 at full speed. Like I should, so uh, it being out of training, it's it's hard. It's it's really hard. I, I did my best. I did a lot of Dave T's training in terms of uh, cardio and speed strength and speed endurance. And I have a Vasa that's actually sitting across the room from me that I'm going to be using in the very near future um, to he- keep my stamina up since I am quarantined for the next uh, next ten days. But I mean, being out for a month, it it hurts in many different ways. And um, it definitely showed at the pro series in some of my races, but um, being able to get up and race again, regardless of being on that short two week training uh, span, it it felt good. Yeah. So, so that's interesting. You're out for four weeks, you get to come back for two and a half weeks. And so knowing that you have the Richmond pro swim, you know, in two and a half weeks, what do you focus on when you get back in the water? Um, I personally wanted to focus on sprinting because that's all I ever want to do. But my <laughs> coach had uh, had the idea of me building up my stamina and my endurance. A lot of hundreds, a lot of 150s, 200s, base, just pacing, mm-hmm. trying to hold fastest 200 pace, hunt fastest 100 pace. 
just working on being able to build stamina, which takes a long time and I'm still not there yet, but just being able to build and being able to hold out um, at full speed for as long as possible was definitely the, the angle she ended up taking. Um, and it, it worked to a certain extent uh, being only two weeks in. Yeah. I mean, it seems, seems like the results are definitely there, you know? Um, and again, two and a half weeks, it isn't really enough time to do much of anything, but yeah, working on stamina, that seems, that seems good. And so not only you had an amazing weekend, but I mean, how fun was it to watch a lot of your fellow NC state commits just wreck it for lack of a better term? <laughs> I, I would have been perfectly fine not swimming and just watching them wreck it. Like that was, that was the most, I have not had a full team experience for a long time in terms of either relays or cheering on people. Um, inner squads. Yeah, you can do it, but not as much to the extent where you're watching people win events in a total pro series, especially people that you enjoy being around and that, that, that made the whole trip worth it. Like it, it was just so much fun to watch Aiden and Arsenio kill it in both of their events. And then on the girls' side, Grace and uh, Grace Shovel and her sister. Just it, It's just – it was so cool to be able to see that those kids are going to be in my class next year at NC State. It's, it's mind-blowing thinking that that's, what some, that's the caliber of swimmers I'm going to be swimming with um, in the near future. Yeah, and, and like you said right before we got on, like the NC State presence was palpable. You know, not only did you have uh, future, you know, members of the Wolfpack there, but, you know, there was also quite a few postgrads there. It's it's like how, what, what was it like to be able to race them and to interact with them, um, again, knowing that you were going to be a part of that culture? Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you. It was pretty scary. Um, Justin and Coleman are two very scary looking people. <laughs> um, so seeing that and then realizing that I'm going to be in the same heat as some of them was, uh, um, the hundred free, especially was definitely a little bit intimidating. Um, but they're both extremely nice people, um, reflecting on what NC States, NC States ideals are, which is family. They, they definitely radiate that as they've gone through the program before me. But I mean, swimming with them is in my, in my mind, both of them being very successful ISL swimmers is an, is an honor to be in the same pool as them and to be a part of it and going to be a part of a team that they were once at. And um, I am still a little bit scared of Coleman and I do not think that will go away, but it was, it was <laughs> great to see them and, and race against them in my events. I think the only reason I'm not afraid of Coleman is uh, because I don't swim. <laughs> I think if I did, I would share, I would share your sentiments. Um, he can definitely be intimidating, but, but a super nice guy, like you said, very, uh, so let's, let's get into your weight training. You talked about the, the power the speed emphasis that you've had outside of the pool. And obviously I'm guessing it's, um, one of the things you've been able to do when, when the pools have been shut down. Yes. I've done a lot of out of, out of the water training in terms of body weight training, stability training in terms of making myself stronger, um, and individual limbs on my body. It's, it's been great. Um, actually wearing the shirt right now, it's the garage gym at Traymore. Uh, my trainer, Dave Tees, um, is absolutely instrumental in almost every single aspect of my racing. Um, I would not be swimming at the caliber that I am right now without that training, but we tend to work on, um, individual areas, um, in one day so that I can strengthen uh, strengthen that area so it would benefit. So we focus a lot on the first 15 meters of my race as that's the weakest part of it. I tend to build a lot in my 50 freestyle, which is not what you're supposed to do. So working on the power and the power endurance and the, the reaction time, the quickness um, through jump, one leg jumps with weights, with uh, assisted jumps, with bands, uh, deadlift, squats, all those things that would power that start the underwater, which I've been working on a lot recently um, in the pool. Um, working outside the pool is extremely instrumental to everything that I've done because um, focusing on those individual parts have helped me build strength and confidence in my in-pool performance because 
having that strength and knowing that I've worked in those individual areas and fine tuning um, exactly what I need to improve on definitely makes it a lot easier for me to take things out quicker and be more confident uh, in any of my races. Yeah. How, how long have you been working with this coach, Dave? I'm going to say about a year and a half, maybe two. Um, we've built a lot and we've done a lot of, a lot of good things over that time span. How long, or sorry, how did you find Dave? How did, how did you and he connect? So back way before COVID, um, my team had, uh, he was the strength coach. We had one dryland cone, we coached him. We had one strength coach for the national swimmers on our team. We did a lot of towers, did a lot of body weight training with um, med balls. And he was the person that would help and come on deck for the first half an hour to an hour, working with those national swimmers, fine tuning what they need to fix, like underwaters with towers, um, med ball throws to improve reaction timing. He'd use a whistle. Um, and actually, I, I heard people like one of my friends, Matt Lequong, was working with him outside of the pool and outside of that 30 minute dry lens span um, in the beginning of practice. So I, um, I gave him a try and invested time into working with him. Uh, I believe it was once a week and then it turned into twice and then three times now that we're working right now. Nice. And um, what, what has been your favorite part about this out of the water work so far? Um, it, I find, I find it really difficult when I'm swimming in the pool to see success, unless if it's a time, like I don't feel it as much, but when you hit 400 pounds on a deadlift, it's a lot more, it's a lot more, um, energizing and like the confidence boost is there. You're with somebody else, you're cheering each other on. Like it, I feel like the visible successes that I make and, and the progress that I make outside of the pool is a lot easier to see. And with somebody as encouraging as Dave is. Um, it makes things a lot easier and more motivating to continue training and building on what I've already made, uh, on whatever successes I've already made. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. It's yeah, it's very palpable. It's right there. And like you said, I've always found lifting to be really fun just because you do have that social aspect of it. Your face isn't looking down in the water. You know, you can enjoy other people's company which, which can be really nice for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so it seems like the lifting has helped. You talked about, you've worked on your, your underwater off the start a lot in practice. What are you doing there specifically to improve that area? Um, whenever my team is kicking, I, uh, I just do underwater. So like I'll, I rotate on and off uh, fins, like I'll do complete hundreds of underwaters, maybe one or two strokes, just as powerful as I can moving my body in that nice fluid motion, just to build that strength and endurance up in my core. Um, underwaters is something I, I struggle with because I haven't really trained it previously to this year and this season, be, uh, because I, in short course back when I was younger i didn't really need underwaters because i just popped up as soon as i could because i was so much faster on top of the water i didn't feel like fixing it but looking at these swimmers now in short course yards and uh, long course meters and how they use their underwaters and utilize it to actually go farther and save underwaters i i definitely needed to jump on that and uh, get started it, whether it's um just underwaters with fins or just pulling to the 15 meter um on every wall as fast as I can, just to, just to get that endurance and that confidence that I can without losing significant amount of energy, uh, when I get on top of the water. Yeah. And you, so you mentioned the first 15 meters is, is the weakest part of your, or your 50 race and you typically build a 50. I'm guessing that's long courses. Do you have a different yeah. strategy for the short course 50? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't really have a strategy the short course 50 i always tell everybody just to um rely on your training and rely on what you what you know and your start and the technique that you've picked up and just don't think at all and just go like I, i've never really thought like all right this is what i need to do on a 50 yes i do focus on the start and the the entry of my start and that's basically about it but the big focus is just getting up and going as fast as you can um now people 
my, my stroke rate is really, really slow, but it always feels like my stroke rate's pretty fast. So I always try to pull um, as hard as I can underneath the water, which ends up slowing down my stroke rate. So it's all about power when it comes to the 50 for me. Um, power off the wall, power underneath the water, um, power pulls. But in terms of like set strategies, I, I really don't have any. Do you, do you have a strategy for the long course 50? Or is yes. it kind of the same focus? Yes, I actually just started implementing uh, long course meter 50 strategies. To, uh, the first time I actually um, tried it out was prelims of uh, of the Pro Series in Richmond. Um, I've been working on my start and I changed it up a little bit. I actually started mimicking Caleb Dressel's start a little bit in terms of the uh, over like overarm recovery into your uh, streamlined position. And that's been working for me in terms of entry because my entry wasn't as smooth before. Mm. But um, working on that smooth entry, powerful underwater, and then um, figuring out where I need to breathe has been something I've been working on and failed in the finals um, at Richmond. It's just all about positioning and where, I, where I'm at in the pool and what I need to do in terms of uh, the breath where I'm taking that. That's the biggest, the biggest strategy that I have. Yeah, what went... What you know, you said you failed in finals. What went wrong there for you? I breathed too soon. Um, I breathed too soon, maybe about a little bit past halfway. And I didn't have the oxygen because I was exerting so much energy and force into the actual swimming aspect of it. And I ran out of air too soon. And I actually ended up breathing near the flags, which was the addition of maybe, maybe a quarter of a second, which could have that I, I was mad about that because that, that was not as a big mistake on my part in terms of figuring out the positioning where I'm breathing. But um, the thinking about that breathing positioning is, is kind of new to me. So it's, uh, it's definitely going back to the writing books and figuring out what, where I'm going to have that breath and utilize it to the best of my ability so I can only have one because I do need one. I uh, struggle with asthma. So it's um, a little bit more difficult for me to do a no, no breath 50 but the two breaths definitely killed me on that, on that 50 freestyle. Cause if you make even the most micro mistakes like that, your race is over. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, I remember seeing you, you added, you know, a little bit of time in finals, but um, yeah, the, one, one breath to two, like you said, seems like it can make a pretty significant difference. Yeah. <clears throat> it's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> Well, always next time, I guess. Do you have Do you have any races coming up in the in the immediate future? Not that I can foresee. Um, I know there's another pro series coming up in the future. I'm not sure if I'm going to be attending that due to um, being out of school for two weeks, or not for two weeks, but being on hybrid learning for two weeks, and then also being out of school for the span of the COVID test through the actual me time itself. It's, it's a long time and it's a lot to cover um, and a lot to catch up. I'm still struggling to do that um, as we speak. So it's going to depend on scheduling and um, how things are going to go. Hopefully my team hosts an inner squad, which will be my next meet. And I won't really find out about that until they announce it, but um, nothing, nothing right now. Gotcha. Do you, do you guys do much race practice in practice? Um, yes and no. Uh, as we approach meet time, we start to amp up the racing, the more rest and the shorter amount of distances. But um, beginning in mid season, it tends to be a lot of swimming to get endurance up. She looks to build endurance and then unleash it at the meet. So it's building endurance, building endurance, tweaking things, tapping into that sprint energy a little bit and then unleashing it at a meet. Things have been very interrupted. So that strategy I don't think is has been working as much due to the fact of being in and out of the pool month here, month there um, due to the COVID restrictions. But um, for me, I try to race as much as possible so that I can still hold on to that, that uh, the sprint energy that I have. Um, Cause that without that, I would not be anything. So me it's, it's either me racing at the end of practice with some people in a 50 or doing an actual set, uh, an actual sprint set. Um, it's definitely, definitely something I try to keep track of to make sure that I don't let it go. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Race, racing at the fifties at the end of practice is always good fun anyway. Yeah. 
Uh, do you do you have a favorite stroke you like to race in, in a fifty at the end of practice? Butterfly. <laughs> that's a that's a good choice. <laughs> I don't. I I honestly am very bad at practicing butterfly, but racing it in the fifty at the end of practice it forces <laughs> me to go underwater, and it just I don't. I honestly don't know. That's like my. That's actually like my tester to see where I'm at, mm. um, in terms of my strength and my my power. Um, is the butterfly at the end of practice or breaststroke, those two strokes. Do you, do you, do you have teammates that can beat you in a 50? Uh, Kurt Von Altenreed is very close to me in the 50, free, uh, 50 fly, but no, not, not really. Um, but there's, there's a lot of people that push me. Yeah. But no, I, I don't think, I don't think so. No. I mean, yeah, I was, I was just curious. Like you said, you've got some serious sprint energy and I feel like you'd, you'd be a hard target to catch in a 50 of anything. <clears throat> um, so let's, I want to take it back a, a, just a little bit. You know, we talked a few months ago and since then you said it's been pretty spotty. So before you had that f- month out of the pool, what had training been like? Uh, was, were there more months out of the pool? So this summer, um, we actually had a very long streak of practices. That's when I went 21 um, in the short course meters and 49, which was which felt good. I had a lot of practices previous to that in an outdoor pool um, in Hamilton, New Jersey. So we had a long span of practices there, which was good. Um, Built up a good amount of endurance, had a couple inner squads. Um, things went well there. But then when we started reaching the winter, things amped up with COVID and then restrictions started getting tighter. And it, it's been the, the longest break was that month off, but I, I, I'd had um, a week here, a week there, um, spotty with uh, the venues that we're going to be at. Um, but Mercer County Community College is where I practice now, and they've been very lenient and uh, accumul- accumulating of uh, all of our needs and our team coming in for the practices that we do. Um, but it it's it's hard to tell because i kind of just go with the flow i don't really keep track as much Uh, my coach does but um you know just finding finding that balance of off and on and then what i'm doing in that off time yeah i mean like you said i feel like i feel like the majority of COVID has been uh trying to balance off time in a productive way um, how, how have you been managing that as of late? Um, off time, I try to do the best I can in terms of working out and then balancing that with swimming and then, or sorry, balance that out with school. And then, um, my personal pleasure, which I, which I game a lot. Um, that time off, I try to find Dave T's as much as I can and, uh, schedule as much workouts so that I can keep that strength up with him and then I can also uh that that will translate into the pool but finding the balance of all all three things that I I'm used to doing is it's pretty it's pretty difficult because you don't really know what's going to happen things are very unclear and um the balance doesn't just doesn't really make sense right now until we figure stuff out um in the long run and the only way I'm going to do that is by adapting and um, adjusting what I have scheduled to what uh, what things change and how to how to adjust accordingly to the situation that's handed to me. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like it's all it's it's all all been about adjusting and adjusting accordingly, and it's a I mean that's a, it's a hard hard adjustment to make. Um, do, I mean, do you feel like you have been able to go with that flow pretty well and adapt well, or have there been moments where it's been pretty frustrating? Um, it was definitely really, really frustrating when COVID first started because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what was happening. Nobody knew what was happening or what to do because everything was so fresh and new. But um, as we got on through the summer with the uh, the pool separations, the, the limited amount of people in each lane, the procedures that we had to go through in order to um, successfully swim as a team, things got easier and easier and easier. And the frustration level started going down. Yes, it's still frustrating that I can't swim next to all of my teammates and talk normally without a mask on. And I can't work out with my workout partner at Dave T's, but um, frustration level is definitely lower. 
because we're getting so used to this now. It's part of our lives. It's what we have to do and how to, how we're going to have to survive. And um, figuring that out and having enough time to get used to that definitely lowered that frustration level and the complication of uh, how to deal with COVID and working out at the same time. Yeah. And that's wise words from David Curtis. <laughs> I, th I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, <clears throat> and moving forward, like you said, I think we've adapted. We've kind of, this is, this is normal life now. And until we go back to the other normal life, yeah, it's like, this is kind of what we have to deal with. Um, yeah. So, so you've been back in the pool for, you know, two and a half, three weeks. You're currently quarantining from being at, the, at this Richmond pro swim. Um, what's, what, it, what does your next few weeks look like moving forward? So I think I'd be trying to stay in shape with the Vaza, trying to keep my, my, um, there's not much, I mean, yes, you're not in the pool and that's a good tool to use to keep your strength level up, but it, it's just not, it doesn't compare to what's in the swimming pool. So I'm going to have to do my best with that and the resources that I have and Dave T's when I get a negative COVID test. Um, it's just going to be a uh, roll with the punches and try my best to stay as in, as fit as I can. And in an uh, athletic competitive um, body, like body fit and stuff like that. I, it's just roll with what I got and hopefully, and hope for the best and so I can get back in time. Yeah. Well, David, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate you taking the time. Any parting thoughts before we sign off today? Everyone that's watching, just keep going at it because we're so close. Vaccines are coming out now and we should. I, I'm, I'm ready for Tokyo. I think it's going to happen. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.